Thanks for joining everyone. It is Andrew here from IDB. We're going to take a look at the top tips and tricks for the new 2016 Retina MacBook Pro with the new Touch Bar. First up is how to emulate Touch Bar on older Macs. Now, you do need the new MacBook Pro to really get the full extent of the Touch Bar, but if you have an older Mac, there are a couple different ways that you can emulate this. We'll put links down below in the description so you can try it out for yourself. That way, you know what you're getting into and whether you really want that Touch Bar on your new MacBook Pro. A lot of the tips and tricks that we will cover will work in that emulated version, though not all like Touch ID. So the first real tip here is adjusting brightness quickly. Now this works easily just instead of tapping on it and just tapping up and down, you can tap and hold and just slide your finger to the left or right from any position and it'll go up and down. The same thing applies for adjusting volume. So again, instead of tapping on it and then addressing the slider, you can just hold on the button itself and then slide around to adjust it. It really works with any different of the sliders in the system. One more time, tap and hold, drag left and right to adjust that volume or brightness up or down quickly and easily. One thing you may notice right out of the box is that the escape key does not quite reach to that far left hand side. This can be a little bit you know, disorienting when you're used to that escape key being right above and aligned with the left hand side of your keyboard. Well, luckily it actually still works. Even though the button itself is a little bit to the right, you can tap in that top left hand corner and just touch typing and easily still hit the escape key and have it work. So you can tap on the button itself or just to the left without issue. Now, what happens if you have Windows running in Boot Camp? Well, you'll be happy to know that it still will work, though without many of the bells and whistles. You'll still have some basic system functions like keyboard brightness, screen brightness, the escape key, media controls, and volume controls. Basically anything kind of generic that still allows you to control your computer that would normally be on your Mac's keyboard. So now that that touch bar has replaced your function keys, how do you get them back? Simply tapping on the FN or function button in the bottom left hand keyboard brings all those function keys right back to where they normally are. That way if any application you need that for, like VPNing into some computer, they're right where you need them. Now you can even customize that control strip, which is that little area on the far right of your touch bar. Simply click on the Apple, go to system preferences, then keyboard and click on customize control strip. You have a neat little blurred out background and all the different controls you can just simply drag with the mouse onto the control strip. It's really neat how that actually works being able to move that mouse from your screen onto the touch bar screen. It's worth noting you are limited to only four different controls in the touch bar. So right now kind of by default you have the brightness, volume, mute, and Siri, though you can use any of these different controls to replace those different buttons. Once you're done, tap on done in the left hand corner or done on your screen. Not only that, but you can customize the expanded control strip and you simply hit that chevron key to the left of the control strip. Now you have a full gamut of different controls that you can customize. You can add or remove and even add little spaces in between to kind of even them out to make them look the way you'd like them to. Same as before, you take the controls you'd like and just drag them down into the control strip. Though now you have many more options to choose from and a lot more spaces to fill. If ever you don't like what you've done, you can simply drag the default selection back into place. A lot of these could be pretty easy for some people because you can get to a lot of them natively just using a keyboard shortcut. Aside from the control strip and the expanded control strip, you can also customize the app region. That is the center piece between the escape key or the done key in the far left and the control strip in the far right. In any application that supports the touch bar, go to view and customize touch bar in the menus. Now you get to view all the different customizations that that application allows you to take advantage of. PCalc, which is a really great calculator application, has really robust touch bar support and there's really easy ones in there like adding and subtracting and recalling from memory as well as using the function or exponent things, things that aren't normally on the actual calculator itself until you need them. Now say you're in there editing the actual app region of your touch bar and you want to go ahead and make a change to the control strip region. Well, that's really easy to do. So here I'm editing my calculator's touch bar, but I tap on that control strip region, which was previously grayed out. Now I can come in here, make any changes that I'd like, drag a few new controls and replace what was there, and tap on the region to the left, the app region, and I'm good to go. 
really easy just to jump back and forth between those two areas. Accessing emoji is now easier than ever inside of macOS using the touch bar. Anytime I'm typing like a note or a text message, I will see a little emoji button in the top left hand side of the touch bar. Now I can simply scroll through, I'll have all my recently and frequently used emoji right up front, though I do have the full list the more I scroll through. It can be a little bit daunting with the number of emojis there are, but at least the frequently used ones are at the front. Often you'll be presented with a form, usually signing up for something like here I have name, email, and password. This is one of my favorite features of the touch bar, it will actually prompt me with all that information. So if I click on name, it'll automatically give me my name in the touch bar without having to type. It'll give you my emails and even the pre-populated password that I can choose to use from Safari if that's your app that you're using. A lot of people never really need to use the function keys. Probably most people out there won't. Well, if you go to the Apple system preferences and keyboard to go into your actual touch bar controls, you have an option to show the expanded control strip instead of the function keys when you hit the FN or function button. So you'll notice I'm tapping on it now and instead of showing function, it'll show the actual expanded control strip instead. So if you don't use function keys, this may be a better option, having all those expanded controls instead. Now, if you just want to have those expanded controls all of the time, maybe you really don't care for the touch bar and you just want the old controls back all the time regardless of the app you're in. Go to the same place in system preferences and now touch bar will show expanded control strip. So all the time, all across, it'll have that. Now maybe you don't want to use the control strip, well it works the same way. Apple, system preferences, and then keyboard. And now instead of showing the control strip or the expanded control strip, you can go in here and hide. Now it'll only show the app controls. So whenever you're in an application, you'll have more room and that control strip on the right hand side will no longer be there. Now say you want to show function keys in a specific app. Maybe use them all the time in your VPN client. Well, inside of system preferences, go to keyboard and then shortcuts. Click on function keys in the left hand menu and hit the plus button. Now scroll down the list of applications you have installed on your machine. So maybe just as an example, I want to use, how about Luminar, a new kind of photo application. Not really relevant, but we'll go with it for this uh, example. Now I've added Luminar to my menu. Now I can actually open that application and immediately I have the function keys. If I go to any other application, it's back to normal. It has the normal app bar there, but inside of Luminar, if I actually click on the application, you know, we're in Finder now, you have your Finder controls, get out of that, go back to Luminar and Function Keys once more. So you can always have Function Keys in an app without having to press the Function button. The touch bar goes to sleep after 60 seconds and then all the way to sleep after 75. So first it will dim and then completely shut off. So this is fine if you're watching a movie or something and you don't want that screen kind of taken up and taking up battery life. Well, there are different ways to wake it from that state. First, you can touch the trackpad, just tap the trackpad anywhere, or you can touch any of the keys or just simply touch on the touch bar itself. So tapping pretty much anything on the bottom of your iPad or your laptop will wake up that touch bar. This is kind of neat. This is actually a whole separate screen and you can use the touch bar by itself so I can adjust the size of this you know, outline on this rectangle, or I can use my mouse and I can drag that shape around or you can use them both simultaneously. I can drag this shape while adjusting the width of that outline. Yes, this may not be the most apt example of this, the most relevant, but it is neat and it could be useful in other applications. Media Scrubber is another thing that works really well on the touch bar. So you can see I have a video, I'm in QuickTime right now playing this screen recording that I just did and I can use it and I can scrub through and I can see anywhere in this video. It also works obviously for any music that you're playing. But what happens if you have two different sources going? You have a video playing and music. Well, it'll actually show just a different icon. You can see I have my QuickTime icon and my iTunes icon. I can jump back and forth and scrub between each of those different media content independently. So if you do it, hit that X in that far left hand side, it will collapse it and now your control strip has that one more button you can see on the far left. Quarter stepping audio has been something that's been around for a while, but not many people know. And that means instead of going that full jump up, you can actually go a lot smaller. And you would do so from hitting shift and option when you adjusted your volume. Unfortunately, that does not work with a touch bar. You just go each of those different intervals. Even if you hold down option and shift and drag the controls, it still doesn't work. It just goes each of those intervals, that's it. 
Well, if you hit that Chevron key and open the expanded control strip, now hit shift and option, you can tap on the control and move them up tiny little increments to really get the granular control over your audio that you really want. So there you have it, 20 tips and tricks for the new MacBook Pro Touch Bar. Have you run across any others that we left out? Let us know down in the comments if we forgot any or what you think in general. Please go ahead and subscribe. Till next time, this is Andrew for IDB.